We had Suzuki's everywhere, up the road, down the road, everywhere. We had 500 Suzuki's in stock. At one time, nobody had 500 Suzuki's in stock. We were the only guys. One of the most important key factors to rethinking your sales is how to get noticed. In this video, Jim and I talk about the importance of attention getting and the process he used to grow the Jim Shorty Family Auto Group from one dealership to the 17 dealerships it is today. I can't wait to share this practical advice with you. So stay tuned and let's rethink sales. How you can be the greatest salesperson on the planet. And, and now the guy in Toyota in California notices this, this Jim Shorty cat. We had Suzuki's everywhere, up the road, down the road, everywhere. We had 500 Suzuki's in stock at one time. Nobody had 500 Suzuki's in stock. We were the only guys, except for a few big players around the country. But we, we had more Suzuki's in stock than the Chevrolet had Chevrolets in stock. So anyway, so we went on from there, Suzuki and then Kia and kept getting noticed, kept getting noticed, kept getting noticed. But it was always about bring more value to the hour. So once you start advertising, you know, one, one, a guy gave me this advice years ago. He says, don't, you do not promote things that you're not willing to deliver on. So now we're stuck. We had this message out there. What a great day. And so we had to go out of our so way okay. to make it a great day, to have it be a great day for the customer, to have it be a great day for the, for the team member. Because what happens is, is if, if we're have, if we have a team member and we're treating them like crap and, uh, not that we never do that because because uh, I did and we all did, but it's not part of the plan. So we had to we had to correct the mistakes that we made as far as how how are we treating the customers? Pretty darn good, but we messed up with this one. Let's get it fixed. How are we treating the team? Pretty darn good, but we messed up with this one. Let's get it fixed, right? So we weren't perfect, but we had it in our sight that we were going to make it a great day for the team and a great day for the clients. And, and then to keep it very, very, very humble. And so um, that's where those rules kind of evolve from, which is, you know, number the, the number one rule or number one goal of the Jim Shrucky Family Auto Group is to love the customer. And I do mean love them. Number, number, second number one goal of the Jim Shrucky Family Auto Group. And remember, I don't have any script here. I can't, I can't make this stuff up, right? I'm not reading notes here. So second number one goal of the Jim Shrucky Family Auto Group, we felt that these were equally important, was to love the team. And the reason being is we don't love our customers, our clients, we're not going to have any clients. If we don't love our team, we're not going to have anybody to love the clients. So we had to put those two together, right? And then if we do those two really, really well, we get to be incredibly successful. And the number one enemy of any successful business enterprise is in fact, arrogance. Yeah. And I shouldn't say business enterprise, any enterprise, be it a church, be it a, a marriage, be it a, yeah. a, 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 a team, a football team, a basketball team, whatever, any, any group, any, any enterprise involving, you know, more than one person is going to be very, very damaged by arrogance. So we knew that we studied that we figured it out. So that's why the third uh, rule, third goal of the Jim Shrugger Family Auto Group was to keep it very, very, very humble. And I intentionally put three in there for a reason. I wanted to really accentuate that. And that arguably could have been the most important one of all because it's very, very damaging. So this stuff all evolved kind of sort of happen chance, but not right. And we just kept pounding that message into now when I left, it was, so we had, um, so, so, so we're just in the short term, we're a Suzuki and we're a Jeep dealer and we're a used car dealer and we're doing very, very well. Then we got the opportunity to get Kia. We, we absolutely knocked it out of the park with Kia, which led to the second opportunity. So now I have a Kia dealership, me personally, Kia dealership in Uniontown, Kia in North Huntington, and then Suzuki in North Huntington. So now it's three dealerships. Then we got Mitsubishi in uh, Uniontown, uh, or one of, uh, we got this around the same time. So we have Mitsubishi, Kia in Uniontown, that's two. We had um, Kia in North Huntington is three. We had um, Suzuki in North Huntington is four. And, um, and then I actually bought the Ford dealership and I got the Chrysler Group store. Get this, so I traded my Jeep franchise to get the Kia franchise. Talk about getting notice, right? So I traded my Jeep franchise, get the Kia, so Jeep's gone. Mm -hmm. So now I'm a Kia dealer and we, I told you what I did there. Yeah. It's an amazing story and so now the 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 president obama is president he had nothing to do with this but we hit a massive recession the worst recession in the history of uh, i'm sorry the worst recession yeah. since the great depression it was really really bad 
Uh, before the recession, 16 million new cars were sold. During the recession, that number went down to 10 million. So a lot of dealerships were severely affected by that. And the, the guy that I traded the G franchise mm -hmm. to was affected by it. Okay. And so he actually ended up, you know, um, that, that dealership was, oh, man. was closed. Okay. And so I, Jim Shorkey approached Chrysler and I said, I would like to represent your franchise, uh, in, in my market. And they weren't really interested. They wanted to close the thing down. And I, and they started looking at my numbers and I had to pitch them and sell them on why I would be the great guy, the guy to do that. And so we actually were able to sell them on making us the Chrysler Group store in North Huntington. We actually had to keep it in White Oak, which is where it was, for a year. So we operated out of that building for a year. And, and now, now, and then we built, while we were doing it, we built a building, not built it, but we remodeled a, a building and, and, um, you know, made it to, to this is a very expensive project, made it to Chrysler specifications. That was my expense with it. And by the way, that was a very shaky situation because Chrysler Corporation at that time was on the verge of bankruptcy because yeah. of all that had happened with the recession and all that. And it was in very, very bad shape and it turned, they turned it around. And so, so now we're a Chrysler group still group dealer in North Huntington. So we got Chrysler, we got, we got uh, Kia, we got um, Suzuki and then the two in Uniontown. And then I, I had an opportunity to buy, the Ford dealership. And ironically, I, uh, I, um, so I bought the Ford dealership and, and this fellow was already negotiating with the, with, uh, John Thomas who owned the building where we were operating out with the Chrysler dealership. He was already negotiating with John Thomas. So he had already bought the building. So I bought the building from him along with the Ford franchise. And so now I'm a Ford yeah, dealer, which yeah. is one of the most proud moments in my in my life, this was now for, this wasn't Kia. This wasn't Suzuki. This wasn't, uh, uh you know, Mitsubishi. This was right. Ford. This was Ford trucks. This was F one fifties and F two fifties and you know, Ford Mustangs. This was a big deal to this guy here, Jim Shorkey. 